Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. And today, even from the business world, as we're joined for a special two guest edition of the podcast, uh, our guests, Daryl Waltrip and Dean Wegner, will join us in a moment and, and excited to share uh, the conversation that I had with them uh, with you. And I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll be just excited to hear the story of Authentically American. And stick around at the end of the show. Something that Daryl Waltrip said uh, stuck out to me that, that I wanted to unpack a little further. So we'll do that in just a little bit. I uh, want to encourage you to check out our website, unpackingit.com. Uh, also, sign up for our email devotional. Uh, we call it Unpack This. We send it out Monday through Friday. We take a current sports story and relate it to the Bible. And uh, we send that out for free uh, to our subscribers. Uh, so go to unpackingit.com to sign up for that. Uh, also, uh, if you haven't subscribed to our podcast yet, be sure to do that. Uh, enjoy all of our guest interviews on the podcast. And then we also do a two-minute timeout, uh, which takes a sports story related to the Bible. And uh, we do the audio version in two minutes. So, so check that out. But right now, let's jump in. Uh, always appreciate the emails, Bryce at unpackingit.com. But here we go. Daryl Waltrip is in the NASCAR Hall of Fame and is one of the greatest and most popular drivers in history. He is a three-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, and he won 84 cup races. He is now a lead commentator for NASCAR on Fox Sports. He recently became an investor in the company Authentically American, and we are joined today by the founder and CEO, Dean Wegner. He is a West Point graduate and served seven years as an officer, helicopter pilot, and Army Ranger. They both are with us to unpack their faith, their careers, and Authentically American. Daryl and Dean, thanks so much for being with us. How are you? Oh, great. Yeah, you're uh, you're over in the heart of, of kind of my country. Uh, I think your show comes, you're in Charlotte, and uh, I, I spent my whole racing career. Uh, I live in Franklin, Tennessee, but I've always raced out of Charlotte because that's sort of the hub of our sports. So uh, you're right there uh, amongst probably about 50 race teams and probably <laughs> 50 million race fans, so you're in the right spot. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're in the heart of it. And, and I, I guess we'll start there. So, so how did you end up landing in Franklin, Tennessee, Daryl? Oh my gosh. It's, uh, when I was a kid racing up and I grew up in Owensboro, Kentucky and, uh, right on the Ohio river there. And, and there was a little racetrack Whitesville where I started my career, my, my stock car career. And this guy from Franklin, Tennessee used to come up and race with his name was BB Crow, And he and I became great friends. And, uh, I wrecked him a lot and, and tore up a lot of his cars. And he called me one day and he said, I figure the only way I'm going to keep you from wrecking me is if I hire you. <laughs> and so, uh, so he said, uh, how would you feel about coming to the fairgrounds here in Nashville and racing one of my cars? I said, wow, that'd be a big step up for me. I'd love to do it. And so I came down to the fairgrounds here in Nashville, raced his cars a few times, won every time I got in the car, I won. And so he said, why don't you move down here and drive this car all the time? And so I did, and that's how I ended up in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, I moved here in uh, 1970, right after Stevie and I got married, and uh, been here ever since. I love Franklin; it's been good to me. I've car dealerships here; got five car dealerships here, and I moved here with uh, absolutely nothing. And uh, this community, and all the people around here, my friends, and uh, everybody has just just made my made this my home, and I, I can't imagine living anywhere else. Oh, that that's awesome! I've got family in Nashville, and so it's one of my favorite places as well. And 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 Dean, you're you're located there as well, and and you're the the founder of Authentically American, and and so I, I want to share with our audience all about your your company, and it, it's still still new, and, and now with with Daryl being a part of uh, the team as well. Uh, Dean, why don't you you share just how it how it got started, and and your heart and passion. Uh, behind the company. You got it. Thank you, Bryce. And it is a pleasure and a privilege to be on your show because you and unpacking it, what you stand for, hit on two of the favorite, most important topics in my life. And one is the Christian faith that I lead my life with. And number two, I'm a big sports fan and a sports enthusiast myself. 
Daryl was in racing. I was an ice hockey player. Nice. So you went to West Point, played ice hockey at West Point, and still playing a men's league now. Very cool. So it's a privilege to be on the show. And authentically American, you'd mentioned new. We are now coming up on our one-year anniversary this month. Wow, that's awesome. So to everybody, Bryce, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's when we started it with a blank sheet of paper. But I could not be more energized with the response we're receiving in the marketplace. And it has not been easy. But we are starting to deliver on our vision, which is to build an iconic American brand that's truly American-made. And that second part of the descriptor is most important because people will say, Dean, you're like a Nike or an Under Armour. But unlike those two brands, everything we do, no asterisk, no exception, everything we do is made in America. Wow. We're passionate about creating jobs. We're passionate about creating a high-quality branded product. And we are working with businesses. We've got collegiate licenses. We are working with charities and nonprofits. And arguably could not be a better time to be doing what we're doing. And we're very fortunate. One year into it, was introduced to DW and very thankful and fortunate to have him as a member of the Authentically American team. A- absolutely. So so people could check out authenticallyamerican.us. And, and, and basically you guys offer, I mean, so many different products and, and, and high quality apparel from, from Oxfords to polos, t-shirts, jackets, sweaters, vests, and, and headwear. And, and as I was doing some research, it really stood out to me that a lot of these products used to always be made in America. And now it's, it's only maybe 3% of this, this type of product is, is made here. So how did that happen? And, and I guess how important is that, that number to you to say, all right, we, we've got to make a difference here. Bryce, we absolutely want to make a difference. We talked about our vision to build an iconic American brand that's truly American-made, but at the heart of our mission is job creation, being able to provide great jobs for fellow Americans right here in our country. And you talked about the percent of the apparel made in the U.S. It's shocking, the history. When I share everyone a brief snapshot that 30 years ago, 75% 75% of the apparel in the U.S. was made in the U.S. Even mid-90s, Bryce, 20 years ago when I graduated from West Point, it's still 50%. Mm. And when people hear that it's only 2.7%, it's just shocking, devastating to know that millions and millions of jobs have gone overseas. And we're at the point now where we can not only produce a high-quality product that's oftentimes a better product that's competitively priced, and just a better story. Man, I love it. AuthenticallyAmerican.us. We're joined right now by Dean Wegner, uh, a West Point graduate, Army veteran, and, and the founder and CEO of Authentically American. And we're also joined by NASCAR legend Daryl Waltrip, who recently invested in the company. And, and so, Daryl, how, how did you connect with Dean and, and decide to, uh, to, to get behind this organization? Well, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm, of course, my, my, I think my faith, I, I think, I think God always puts people in your life. Uh, you, you, you always wonder how or why or uh, how did God know? But I'm a big believer in revival. Uh, I think when you're, you know, when your faith, uh, you know, you always, I think you remember as a kid going to a lot of revivals. Uh, a lot of churches used to have revivals and they still do. Uh, but then when I talked to Dean and he was talking about reviving the, the uh, apparel industry, and in in my in my sport, uh, apparel is huge. Oh yeah, uh, there are souvenir trailers at the track, and uh, all the race teams, you know, have uh, uniforms, apparel that they they use. Uh, I'm in the car business, so in our car dealerships, we have apparel. So it just was kind of a natural thing for me. A friend of ours, uh, Bill Berger, introduced me to Dean, and and I, I'm I'm a passionate guy. I, I I'm I'm passionate about my faith. And I have to, man, I have to really always remember that it's my faith first and what I do second. And, and, uh, I didn't always think that way and I didn't always feel that way, mm. but I do now. And when I met Dean and, and we just connected and, uh, he's a smart guy and his vision was just absolutely spot on. Uh, you know, it's a great time to be, uh, trying to revive the apparel industry in the United States. And, uh, with everything made right here in this country, uh, Dean's right. I mean, uh, I didn't, I, I don't, I don't think like he does in a lot of ways, 
but I didn't, I didn't think about all the jobs that have been lost and how this company and his vision and his mission, uh, that it could put a lot of people back to work. I, I remember not too terribly long ago, somebody said those jobs are lost and they're gone forever. Hmm. And I thought, wow, that's, that's, that's a powerful thing to say. Uh, those jobs are lost and they'll be gone forever. Uh, and then you meet someone like Dean and says, they may be lost, but they're not gone forever. We're going to bring them back. And I think our leadership in our country right now feels the same way. And, uh, I'm just, I just was excited about, uh, I know a little bit about the apparel business. We have a little, uh, uh, internet store called dwstore.com where we sell all, a, a, a lot of stuff of mine and other drivers. And, and so, uh, it just, it just, it kind of was right in my wheelhouse. Some I was, uh, and had a little bit of knowledge of. Then I meet a guy like Dean and he tells me what his vision is, what he wants to do. And I said, man, count me in. I want to be on that team. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We're talking with Daryl Waltrip and Dean Wegner right here on Unpacking It. And the company is called Authentically American, authenticallyamerican.us. And, and Dean, you, you mentioned, okay, it's, it's been about a year since you got this started. What, what maybe as you kind of look back are, are the big takeaways so far, the, the, the challenges, the, the good, the bad, what, what, what really comes to mind as you, as you look back? I think twofold, Bryce. Number one is people said when you are in a startup, you're not going to believe how hard it's going to be, and I did not believe them. <laughs> but fast forward a year later, I'm like, wow. They were right. When you start with a blank sheet of paper, it is not easy. But on the flip side, Bryce, it has been so incredibly rewarding about what we're doing because when you start with a blank sheet of paper, you can be very intentional about who you are, what you stand for, your values, your mission. And you know, from a value standpoint, I'll give you a, a couple examples. So we're obviously very passionate about Made in USA, about creating jobs, so that's inherent in our values. And I tell everybody quality is equal important because the idea of producing a made in the USA product that's creating jobs is a great ideal, but it means nothing unless it's a high quality product. That's right. We're also building a very customer centric organization and we're very passionate about giving back as well. And that's at the heart of our faith, just a you know, fundamental principle about tithing and 10%. So and you know, we have built that into our business model. So if you're very a fortune cool. 500 customer, for example, that purchased from us, they know that 10% of our revenue is being donated to two veteran charities. Awesome. And it's been amazing, Bryce, to see the positive response because people say, Dean, one, you've got a great quality product. Number two, it's competitively priced. And then we love the fact that when our logo, our company's logo is with Authentically American, it's a subtle reinforcement of the values of who we are and what we stand for. It's awesome. And I'll tell you, from a value standpoint, I was so thankful that Bev Berger introduced me to Daryl because we're fortunate now to have five investors on board with Authentically American. And I've been very choiceful and intentional on who joins because there are a lot of people, Bryce, in this world with a lot of money, but not that many of them do I really want associated with Authentically American. Yeah. And I really want investors that have Authentically American-like values. And when I got introduced to Daryl and found out first and foremost, he's a man of faith. He's a man of character and integrity. He's a family man. His values just align so well with Authentically American. And as we are now one year into this journey and looking to build our brand awareness and exposure, having somebody of Daryl's character and faith on board and his national recognition is just phenomenal for our brand. Man, so cool authenticallyamerican.us. He's Dean Wegner, uh, a West Point graduate, Army veteran, and, and the founder and CEO of Authentically American. And we're also joined by NASCAR legend Daryl Waltrip. And, and, and Daryl, we've, uh, we've heard a little bit just about, about your faith, and, and, and Dean spoke uh, about it as well. Uh, would love to, to just hear about some of the, the key moments in your life or, or maybe even the people that, that have had the greatest impact on your faith. And you're you're outspoken about your faith. You lead with your faith, but but what are what are some of those 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 ways and factors that that have really had the the biggest impact on you? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, motor racing outreach is our ministry at the racetrack, and uh, Stevie and I and a, a couple of other couples, uh, we are the 
we we started MRO Motor Racing Outreach along with Max Health. Max was a uh, an ordained minister from California, moved to Charlotte, and helped us with the ministry. And that ministry is ongoing, is stronger than ever. And uh, of all of all the things I've done, as I look back, whether it's winning Daytona or or winning championships, whatever it is, uh, I don't think anything can top uh, the impact that motor racing outreach has had on our racing community. Uh, we have Bible studies in, in shops around Charlotte uh, all through the week. We have chaplains at the track on weekends. We have a family community center. So a uh, great impact uh, that that ministry has had on our sport. But I, I don't know if this is, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not patting myself on the back, but I got to speak at the president at the national prayer breakfast yeah. uh, uh, three or four years ago. And I'll never forget uh, my friend uh, uh, from South Carolina called me and uh, said, we would like for you to come to the national prayer breakfast. I said, Oh, great. I've never been. Uh, and, and I said, so what do you, what, what do you see me doing? We want you to be the keynote speaker. Whoa. I said, Whoa, wait a minute. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm a race car driver from Franklin, Tennessee. And I've, I've spoke in front of a lot of big crowds and CEOs and board members and everything else, but I just don't know about that. I just don't know if I'm qualified or not. Mm. And then he chuckled a little bit and he said, well, we knew that going in. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I wasn't qualified, but you're the guy we want. And so, wow. So I said, oh, let me think about that. So I, at first I wanted to say no, because it was just, it was almost too big a suitcase for me to carry. And, uh, but Stevie and I talked about it we prayed about it and, and God just sort of touched me and said, look, I want you to do this. This is something I, I, I think is good for you. It'll be good for uh, it'll be good for the prayer breakfast and I want you to do it. And so I said, okay, I agreed to do it. And I worked hard for several months getting ready for that, that morning, uh, in February, happened to be on my birthday, February the 5th, Man. which was kind of another sign. I thought maybe that means I'm supposed to do it. That's right. But anyway, I was a nervous wreck. I mean, I'm sitting there bro, with Obama, and Miss, Miss, uh, Michelle and, and a bunch of senators and the room is packed. There's 2000 people. The uh, Dalai Lama sitting right in front of me. There's people that, I mean, hide uh, these dignitaries from all over the world, not just the country, but the world. Yeah. And I'm going to be the keynote speaker. And uh, some, for whatever reason, the morning of that br- breakfast, I woke up and I was as calm and cool as if I'd, if I was getting ready to drive a race car, man. And, uh, and I walked in there and I sat down and they, and I went up to the podium and, uh, and, and, uh, started talking about my faith and where I'd come from and what it meant to me and how it impacted me and how it changed my life. And, uh, it just came out. It all came out just exactly like it was supposed to. And a lot of people said, boy, do you really, uh, you were knocked it out of the park. I said, no, God knocked it out of the park. Oh. Cause that, those words came out that some of the words and some of the things that came out of my mouth, they were from God. They weren't from me. And so that was a big moment. People always say to me, when, can you think of a time when God showed up in your life? Mm. Well, I can think of a lot of times, but that's one time I know for sure uh, that I was in <laughs> over my head and God bailed me out. Wow, that's incredible. So so once that was over, what were your thoughts and, and emotions as you kind of, even even today as you, you think about that, what, what comes to mind as, as just the, as far as what you learned even through that experience? Well, I just think it, I think when you put your faith in God, and when you trust God and he has something, he, a plan for you, uh, he will, he will, he will help you make, he will help you make that come true. He'll make that successful for you. I trusted God in that situation. Uh, I, I, I didn't feel like I was qualified to go speak to those, that, those people, but I knew I was, I, I knew I was a believer. And so I just talked from my heart and I, and I talked about my faith and how it impacted me and, and at the end of the of the the breakfast that morning, uh, it was it was very successful outing. So I just I I didn't always when I was younger I didn't I didn't understand putting your faith in God and trusting God, letting God lead you where He wants you to go. But as I've gotten older, I certainly see that. I realize that, and I see times in my life when that's happened. Mm-hmm. And so uh, those life experiences, I'm a big believer in life experiences. Uh, God puts people in our lives. He put Dean in my life. Uh, because he knows that Dean and I have a lot in common. Uh, the people that I've raced for, driven for, uh, people that have worked on my race cars and people around me, uh, those are people that God put in my life for one reason or another. And I, and I never realized that until I got a little bit older. 
Daryl Waltrip, our guest right now on Unpacking It. And we're also joined by Dean Wegner, uh, founder of AuthenticallyAmerican.us. And, and, and Dean, just to, to continue with what, what Daryl was talking about and, and just the, the importance of faith and, and relying on the Lord and trust in him, throughout this, this first year and the, and the growth of, of your, your company, is, is there a, a lesson or a, a moment where you've really seen God work in your life as you have dealt with the, the challenges like you, you talked about earlier uh, of starting a company? Because I, I know what it's like starting a ministry and the challenges that I've experienced. And so what, what, uh-huh. have, you, what have you learned personally? It, it has not been an easy journey, Bryce. And I think the biggest takeaway has been that in spite of the busyness and the need that literally could work 24-7 every day, every week, every month, because you're in startup mode, how important it is to keep grounded and what's most important. Mm. And what I love now, like you've done, say, Dean, what, what's most important to you? And I'm very quick to say it really starts, number one, with my Christian faith and my walk. And number two is family. And I also put after that, Bryce, I say my health and fitness. Mm. And I tell everybody, if those three are well, everything else in life is going to take care of its place. Because if I've got a great walk with the Lord and family's doing well and I'm healthy, then Authentically American and all the challenges we have there are going to be just fine. That's good. Wow. What a, what a great word. Let, let's end it right there and uh, encourage people to check out AuthenticallyAmerican.us. And, and they've got high-quality apparel and products that are made in the USA from, from Oxfords, the polos, T-shirts, jackets, sweaters, vests, headwear, and uh, we've been uh, joined today by, by NASCAR legend Daryl Waltrip, who uh, recently became an investor in the company, and, and then also the founder, uh, Dean Wagner. So, Dean and Daryl, it's been a privilege to talk with both of you. Love the story and, and love what you guys are doing, and appreciate you taking some time to join us here on Unpacking It. Yep. You know, it's not every day you get two DWs on the same show. So, uh, <laughs> well, it's, been, it's been a pleasure, and uh, I know you're doing a lot of great work, and you keep it up, too. Absolutely. Absolutely, Bryce. Keep it going. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. There's DW and DW. All right. We did it. Two guests, one podcast, and uh, it was fun to uh, go back and forth between those two and be able to hear the story uh, of Authentically American, and and I know what it's like to to start something from scratch and, and to get it going and the challenges and the excitement of all of that, and so it was cool to hear kind of where they're at in their journey after a year. And uh, to be able to really hear from Daryl Waltrip was cool. And, and one of the things that he, he talked about that, that really stood out to me that, that I'm a big believer in myself is how God brings people into our life at certain times for certain purposes. And it's so cool to look back and, and really see how he orchestrated people. Now, a lot of times we'll, we'll talk about how he's, you know, orchestrated details. And I think even in recent weeks on the podcast, we've discussed that and, and how he, you know, he works things together for good. But the way he does that a lot of times is through people and through relationships and connections. And sometimes they're, they're random connections. And, you know, it's a, it's a one-time encounter that, that only God could have brought two people together the way that he did. And, and it's just so fun to see and, and I think for us each day, it's just being alert and aware to the people that we're interacting with and the people we're meeting and, and to never uh, blow off an encounter. Because I've seen multiple times in my life where, you know, maybe it was just a quick introduction where that person came back into my life years later, but it was that initial connection that, that, that allowed the, the second meeting to happen. Or many times I've gotten lunch with somebody or breakfast with somebody and I left the meeting thinking, eh, that didn't really go the way that I thought or I don't know why I met that person or that was that a waste of time? And then years later, there was purpose in it. And, and it's just, it's fun to see because God uses all of those interactions, all of those relationships for his purposes. And, and a lot of times we just have to uh, just be open. I think being willing to, to meet people and not necessarily, you know, we, we don't want to waste time if we know that it's a waste of time. But, but I think sometimes where it's just like, yeah, I got this sense. I need to meet with this person. I don't know why, 
maybe we just got to do it. Or ah, I got to call this guy. Somebody, somebody mentioned I needed to call this person. I, I need to do that. So for somebody listening today, maybe that's an encouragement to you that you got to make the call, invite that person out to lunch, and, or, or maybe it's somebody that you met a few years ago and you go, you know what? Maybe that's the person that I need right now. Maybe that's the person that I've been praying for, for, for God to bring into my life, and maybe he already has. So I don't know what that is for you specifically. I've just seen it over and over, the importance of connections and, and God using people in our lives at different times. So uh, it's cool to hear the story. Uh, DW and DW, uh, would love to know your thoughts. You can email me, Bryce, at unpackingit.com. Always love to hear from you. And we'll talk to you next time right here on the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful week.